What's good, y'all? It's me, Jamil, with Our Prevails Project, and I'm here at the Sawgrass Mall to find out what y'all know about black history. What you know about that? All right. So, what's your name? My name is, just call me Tommy. Tommy? Okay, so Tommy, what month is Black History Month? Ooh, I forget. <laughs> All right. So, do you know what the Divine Nine is? No. No? Okay. First question is, do you know what month Black History Month is? Ooh, uh, I believe it's in March, right? Do you know who gave the I Have a Dream speech? Um, that would be um, Martin Luther. Do you know what country Nelson Mandela was from? Nelson Mandela. No. All right, if I told you it was in Africa, would you know? Was it, is it in Africa? Who was the first black president of the United States? Barack, I guess. Yeah. All right, so can you name three HBCUs? FAMU, Bethune-Cookman, Florida Memorial. Okay. Do you know when the Civil War ended? I'm asking myself. What country is Marcus Garvey from? Jamaica. Jamaica. Okay, and do you know who the next vice president of the United States is going to be? Kamala Harris. Okay, and who is Jamaica's most brightest reggae star? Bob Marley. The Slavery Emancipation Act of 1833 put forth by the British freed only the Africans in their colonies under the age of six. Everybody over the age of six had to work as an apprentice until 1840 when they got their true freedom. So let's say like this block is a neighborhood, right? This okay. is a low income block. But the way some school systems are set up is because you live on that side of the block, you can go to this A rated school. But I live over here, I have to go to the F rated school. And so obviously your school is getting the more funding, the more equipment. And sometimes it's based off the fact that they zone these areas based off of who lives there. So because you're in that better area, even though we we live across the street from each other, that system of racism allows you to get elevated, it gets you the, the funding, more schools might, more colleges might come their way to say, hey, come to our college, while in the lower class areas, we have army recruiters come and say, come join the army. Come join the military. Can we yeah, sit down for a second? Yeah, yeah, of course. It may not just be something that comes out of our minds, but also may be something that comes out, you know, biologically. Because, for example, I know a friend who uh, was not... Like he told me from the beginning, his parents never taught him how to be, you know, racist. His parents were actually the most, uh, the, the person, they, they wanted to teach him how to be, you know, uh, what's the word for it? They wanted to coexist with everybody. But he, from a very young age, just didn't like, you know, black people. I genuinely didn't like them just yeah. because of their skin color. But so I'm know, wondering. I know, think, I think that's like, I think that's really the concept of systematic racism too, right? Is like, there's so many levels to, to making racism become a thing. Yeah. That even if even it's, if it's multi it's multilateral. I think that you and I might learn a great deal from each other. If you can overcome the curtain of my color. The curtain of my color is what you use to avoid facing the facts of our common history the facts of American life. It is easy to call me a Negro or a nigger or a promising black man, but in fact, I'm a man like you. I want to live like you. This country is mine too. I paid as much for it as you.